Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to prove part two of theorem 4.12. Part two says if V is a vector space of dimension n and S is a set of n vectors from V that spans V, then S is a basis for V. All right, let's remind ourselves of what this means. Um, uh, v has dimension n means that there's a linearly independent set of vectors from V that spans V. What does that mean? Well, it means a set spans the vector space if any vector in the vector space can be written as a linear combination of just the vectors in that set. So it takes n vectors to do that, to be linearly independent and span the vector space. That's what it means to have dimension n. So here, S is a set of n vectors, and all we know is that it spans V, um, but we need to prove that that means it's also linearly independent, and that makes it a basis for V. So we're going to do this by contradiction. So let's write down all of our assumptions. So let V be a vector space of dimension n, and let S be the set V1, V2 up to Vn, be a set of vectors from V that actually spans V. But now let's assume, by way of contradiction, that S is not a basis. So that means it's, it's not linearly independent. So that means that the set V1, V2 up to Vn is a linearly dependent set. And what does that mean? That means that any one of those vectors, any one of those n vectors, can be written as a linear combination of the other ones. So in particular, Vn is a linear combination of v, v1, v2, up to vn minus 1. Well, what does that mean? Well, we already know that s, all n of the vectors, span v. So any arbitrary vector in the vector space can be written as a linear combination of v1, v2, up to vn. But now, um, we have Vn is really a linear combination of V1, V2 up to Vn minus 1. So any linear combination of all n of the vectors can really just be rewritten as a linear combination of the first n minus 1 vectors. So what that means is the slightly smaller set, V1, V2 up to Vn minus 1, spans the vector space. So we've got a smaller set. There's only n minus 1 vectors in it. If you have a set of n minus 1 vectors that spans your vector space, then the vector space has dimension at most n minus 1. And we, we assumed V had dimension n. But now we see, oh, it can't have dimension more than n minus 1. Well, that's a contradiction. So something we assumed was false. So S, it turns out, had to be linearly de independent. Our assumption that it was dependent was false. So that means that S is a basis. It spans V and it's a linearly independent set. It has to be a basis for V. All right, your job is to prove part one of the same theorem. Uh, your job is to prove that if S, if you know S is linear independ linearly independent, then your job is to prove that it also spans V. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.